So I'd like to show off uh, using some of this equipment here the phenomenon of beats. It's not beats as in like the rhythmic pulse of the song or anything like that, but rather beats are what you get when you have two sound sources playing that are very close in frequency but not quite. Um, easiest quick way to demonstrate this is with these tuning forks here. They're, uh, they're engineered to be the same frequency, so if I hit them both they'll be the exact same frequency and you won't hear anything. Then I'll mess with one of them and you will hear what I'm talking about. So let me show you first that they're the same frequency right now. Nothing at all unusual there, hopefully. Um, turns out though, if I, if I take this little weight here and attach it to the prongs of one of the forks, I will throw its frequency off, then there'll be a little bit of a difference and we'll be able to hear the beats between the two forks. So let me actually do it farther up here so they're, they're very different in frequency then the effect will be obvious. So uh, one at a time they sound like right this Let's see. and this. Hopefully you should hear that uh, this fork is playing lower now. It's, it's significantly flat and if you play them at the same time then there'll be some, some audible beats. So here we go. students call it a wavy-like effect. I mean, there's clearly both you know, waves coming from both things, but there's a, there's a set of volume swells there, and those are called beats. You can affect how often they appear by changing the difference in frequency between the two. If I move the weight down on this fork a little bit, um, th they'll be closer in frequency, more in tune with each other, but still out of tune enough. And um, let's listen to that. swells again, but they were occurring much more slowly this time than they were before. All right. Turns out we can exactly quantify um, how fast those, those beats or those volume swells occur. Turns out what we call the beat frequency or how many of those things you hear every second is simply the difference in frequency between the two sources. So now I'd like to move over to my function generators, these produce sine tones of whatever frequency I specify. Right now, I have them set up to play 220 hertz each, which is an A, that's the note A natural, and if I play these both at the same time, they will sound the same. So here's, here's one, and the other one is the same, and if I play them both at the same time, you won't hear anything. But what we know about beats is that uh, when, we, when we make these two different, you'll hear the beats, and the beat frequency is equal to the difference in the two frequencies. So if I set one of these to 222 hertz and one of them to 220, then the beat frequency will be two. You'll hear two beats every second. So let's, let's actually try that. I'm going to take this here and adjust the frequency so it's exactly 222. The difference will be two hertz, and we'll, we'll hear the beats very exactly. Um, when the beats start coming, you can, check the, uh, you can check the clock on YouTube and make sure that there are two of these swells every second. Every second that passes, you'll hear it, you'll hear it beat twice. So. Here we go. That's 2.22, so let that play for a few seconds.
if I keep turning this one up, I can make them come so uh, quickly that you know they'll they'll be harder and harder to resolve, and the notes will be uh, more and more out of tune, so it'll be less pleasant. I can make it like 2:30, so 2:30, 2:20. We have 10 beats a second. You can see the effect. The farther apart these are in frequency, the more 